In this video, you'll learn about best practices for scaling your Mighty Networks community by leveraging a team. We'll look at proven methods to help your team be more effective and cohesive so that you can streamline your time and energy and grow your Mighty Network. These techniques are useful even if you don't have a team yet. I'm Marcia Chadley, here to help you be successful using the Mighty Networks platform. We'll start by looking at a solution for team communication and collaboration, and then how to coordinate management of your community more easily. Here's a behind the scenes area built inside a Mighty Network for the team to work together. Regular check-ins and updates are key to group coordination and keeping everyone on the same page. This area also supports creative collaboration and development of new ideas for the network. When you're putting together a backstage area for your team, you want to set it up as a hidden collection. Inside that hidden collection, add a space for your team to get together and communicate and collaborate to have events together. Set up your meetings here and event posts. You can message all the members of the team using message all members of the space. You can also set up different spaces for storage to keep track of ideas and thoughts and maybe past content and verbiage that you want to have. You can do all kinds of different testing in spaces here in this team area. This is a place for your team to experiment, to demonstrate new ideas, and to communicate with each other. I recommend using a team account to work in the network instead of each team member using their own personal account. This is key when there are multiple community managers and moderators in a network. But even in a network that's run by one person, it sets the stage for later scaling and it actually makes things easier. When a team is managing the network, using the single staff account helps keep things streamlined and consistent. It's easier and it's simpler for both the team and network members. For example, network members easily know who to reach out to when there's a team or a staff account, rather than which of the multiple people that are hosts and moderators they should check in with. It provides great continuity and coverage for when people are taking vacation or they're sick, and especially in the case where somebody leaves your team. You don't want all their posts to go away or to remain there with their name on it. By having one staff account, those kinds of things happen behind the scenes and the members feel like they have continuous coverage. It also provides a way for your team to share management duties, responding to chats, responding to comments. Those things can be coordinated and shared among multiple team members without the people in the network knowing that that's the case. Here are some practical tips for using a team account. Each team member will have their own personal account for personal interaction inside the network if they want to do that, and also access to the team account for all the rest of the work that they're going to do, the community management and the responding as a member of the team. You can have both of those accounts open at the same time if you open them up in different browsers or if one is opened up in an incognito window can often be handy to have both your personal account open in one browser and your team account open in the other. You can actually have multiple people logged into the team account at the same time, so that works really well. Each of the people who's accessing the team account can use the notifications list to see what has been responded to and what hasn't. You can also mark and unmark notifications to help other people in the team know what you're working on and what still needs to be handled. By using the team account, you have the ability to work together on draft posts and table of contents materials. Draft posts are tied to a particular account, so that's the only way that you can see a draft post that somebody else is working on is if you're logged into the same account. Event posts are similar. Zoom integration is tied to the account being used, so when somebody creates an event post, if only that person or that account can go in and make any changes to the event post. Creating event posts using a team account allows all members of the team to go in and edit and change those event posts. When you set up your team account, you'll be choosing whether to set up that account with host privileges or moderator privileges. In fact, you may end up 
having one account with moderator privileges and one with host privileges. Hosts have full access to everything, including payment and network account settings, and they have the ability to live stream. Moderators have more limited abilities. They're focused on member moderation and working with network content. When possible, you want your team members to be moderators, just so that they have limited access and ability to make unwanted changes accidentally. In addition to host and moderator roles at the network level, each space has its own host and moderators. So when your team account joins a space, you can decide again at that level, is it does it have host capabilities inside the space or moderator capabilities inside the space? Thanks for joining me to learn about scaling your mighty network through effective team-based practices. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button for more ideas. And you can join my free mighty network for even more tips and techniques. If you're looking for help in tailoring the mighty networks platform to your specific situation, I offer private and small group support. Information for all of those things is in the video description. Thanks again for watching and here's to you building a thriving community on the Mighty Networks platform.